How many folks are, are familiar with, uh, with Burson Associates? Great, a number of you. Uh, uh, <clears throat> we were, for the last 10 years, a research and analyst firm that uh, exclusively focused on uh, researching large global organizations, uh, looking for uh, various aspects of HR, uh, including uh, learning and development, uh, and uh, its impact on the business, and then tease out insights associated with that. Uh, as of January 1st, uh, we were acquired by Deloitte, and we are now a business unit within Deloitte Consulting, uh, and so uh, at this point uh, provide uh, insights across all of the various elements of, of HR, including L&D, uh, and provide that research through research memberships to uh, various organizations. But, uh, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just setting the, the tone for uh, why we uh, actually have studied this particular area and some of the insights that uh, we've gained. I will tell you that the deck that you're going to get actually is about three times as big as this. Uh, so it's all of the background material associated with our maturity models and frameworks and insights. So you're going to have all of that as part of the download when you're ready to, uh, to have that uh, as part of the PDF that you'll, uh, you'll obtain as, uh, as uh, background material. Uh, but what's driving uh, the visiting of uh, the, the drivers for uh, transformation of learning and development in large organizations uh, is the fact that everything is changing. <clears throat> that the, the nature of the workforce is changing, uh, the nature of the workplace is changing, uh, all of the different aspects from uh, the multi-generations to uh, various aspects of, of learning and various approaches of, of, for learning, including what technology can actually support, all has been changing, especially over the last uh, three to four years. It's been substantially accelerating and it's driven by uh, economic uh, uh, situations worldwide uh, and uh, as, as the, the various uh, economies uh, change, they drive different decisions within corporations, investments within those corporations, uh, and therefore uh, the learning and development uh, departments have to respond to that in providing solutions that still are impactful uh, and have uh, a measurable impact on uh, the organization, uh, but in many cases have to be uh, more efficient and delivered at, at lower budgets. So all of these things are, are, are driving uh, uh, the, the refocusing of learning and development organizations uh, to be more impactful uh, as they now are delivering the various solutions. Uh, in the UK, and we just published uh, our uh, UK fact book, and I'm going to give you some data from that, just published yesterday. Uh, so if you're interested in looking at some of the benchmarking and then comparative benchmarking between the UK and the US, uh, it was just published yesterday and available uh, through uh, Burson.com. Uh, but the UK obviously is going through various uh, economic changes, uh, reflecting, as we have seen in our uh, recent benchmarks, in changes in the, in the investment that's being made and is driving now uh, the, uh, the, the, the further focusing of learning and development organizations on becoming more efficient, more effective, and more aligned with the business and business goals. Uh, and we're seeing that also in driving towards much more of an integration with with talent management and focusing on the developing of, of that talent as part of the focus of learning and development for the various organizations. So uh, what we've seen from the research, and let me take, a, take a, just a moment because I'll, I'll read you some of the, uh, the, the data and it's kind of interesting. Um, the, the training spend per learner on average from our, from our benchmarking study that we just published is about 838 pounds uh, per, uh, per learner. Um, in the U.S., that's about 441 pounds uh, per learner. So 838 compared to 441. Uh, the U.S., in fact, has gone through a major refocusing in terms of the way that uh, it's investing in uh, in the learners uh, within uh, the L&D organizations. Staffing per 1,000 employees, 1,000 learners, 10.1 uh, in the UK on average across all, all industry verticals, across all sizes of organization. In the US, 4.2. So 10.1 compared to 4.2, uh, there's less uh, training staff per learner uh, in the U.S. compared to, to the U.K. Uh, and you can kind of start doing it in your own head at this point in terms of where do I compare to the 10.1, where do I compare to the, the 4.2. Um, training hours per learner, this is actually kind of interesting. Uh, in the U.K., it's 7.4 
uh, learning hours, per, I mean, uh, hours per learner uh, in terms of the actual training hours delivered. Um, in the U.S., it's 22. Um, What's gone on over the, over the last uh, several years is in the U.S., uh, they have embraced to a very significant uh, extent uh, virtual learning, a lot of online learning, a lot of blended learning, uh, and as the, as the learning and development organizations start to embrace that and take greater responsibility, not only for the traditional instructor-led and e-learning and, and even virtual learning, but now embracing a much, a much wider um, uh, focus on learning in the organization, uh, including on the job uh, training and learning, uh, that number starts to go up and uh, I, obviously you see the cost has gone down. Um, the cost per student hour in the UK, uh, 6.3 uh, 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 pounds per uh, per student hour in, in the U.S., uh, 34 pounds. So less per uh, student hour that's, that's invested. Uh, in many cases, again, when you're looking at blended learning, uh, the investment is, is, has a greater leverage over a greater number of hours. Uh, so as you're starting to look at the dynamics of the investment that's made, the number of learners that it touches, and the way that it's delivered both uh, in classroom and virtually, all of that has a dynamic in terms of, of, uh, uh, of having that, that type of impact. So as organizations now start looking at learning and development, and in many cases start to look at learning and development focused on business outcomes, uh, there's a number of different elements that are looked at. Um, first of all, efficiency. So can I make the process of developing, delivering the learning solutions uh, to my organization more efficient? Uh, and a lot of that is driven by the fact that uh, you're going into a different learning solution and based on a different learning solution with different technologies, with different, different strategies, uh, it can drive the, the level of efficiency and obviously you see uh, based on the uh, uh, economic drivers in the U.S. over the last several years, they have been driven into that much more efficient delivery uh, uh, strategy. Uh, also, uh, alignment. We're seeing uh, the priority set decisions made uh, in terms of the actual investment now based on a heavy alignment through performance consulting and other areas uh, around what does the business actually need. And then finally, uh, what is the effectiveness? Uh, what is the effectiveness in terms of uh, impact on the ability of uh, the actual learner to do their job? And what is the effectiveness of that on the business and business results? All of that starts to drive business impact and more and more learning and development organizations are now looking at that as uh, the approach. What we have studied now is uh, literally hundreds of, of organizations worldwide uh, to tease out what are the true drivers uh, of uh, the efficiency, effectiveness, and alignment for these various organizations. Uh, these are a, a recent study we just published at the end of last year uh, on high impact learning organizations. And if you're familiar with our research, we've been refreshing that every 18 to 24 months since 2005. Uh, and so we revisit this, look at benchmarks, look at uh, organizations and, and what drives efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, these are some of the key elements. Uh, so what is the organizational model? Is it centralized, uh, decentralized, uh, federated? Does it use shared services? All of those kinds of aspects. Uh, what does the leadership look like? Is there a chief learning officer or somebody responsible uh, for learning in the entire organization? Uh, uh, governance. Is there involvement of, of the business in, in managing L&D? Uh, and then you can read the, a number of these others. There's certain what we call table stakes. If you don't have those top seven, you're probably not really uh, running your L&D organization as efficiently and effectively as it could be. Uh, and then the other L&D capabilities that are listed below that are things that drive higher and higher degrees of efficiency and effectiveness as they are put in place in L&D organizations and, and taken uh, to their to obvious limit of... Um, uh, of, of driving that, that business impact. With this, there's certain elements, uh, the high impact learning measurement capability, once you put in uh, metrics, measurement, analytics, that starts to allow you as a L&D organization to, to drive greater and greater impact. Uh, learning content capabilities, as I said, when you start looking at this from a blend standpoint, look at all of the different modalities that you can apply and use that as almost a kit bag 
of different options for your instructional system designers to use in crafting uh, a solution for uh, various uh, learner populations, that starts to drive a, a, a very uh, significant change in efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, and then finally, uh, the culture. The culture being, it's not just about the learning organization. In fact, is the business. How much involvement does uh, first and second line supervisors, middle level management, upper level executives, uh, how much involvement do they have in driving the learning culture and learning in the organization? The, if you have that, that again has a major impact on uh, the organization. So as you start to look at uh, the, the analysis that we do of these organizations and the sensitivity of that, uh, the majority of organizations that have these strong learning cultures actually drive uh, the ability for organizations to have a substantial and measurable impact on the business from the L&D function. So the table stakes. Okay, these are the foundations. So you actually have to have uh, an organizational model that you've thought through from, in essence, a business standpoint. Uh, and so what drives uh, the ability to actually uh, resource and manage uh, the learning organization within the unique cultural elements of, uh, of, of, your, of your organization? A single leader who actually has knowledge of all of the learning that's going on in the organization. They might not be actually responsible for all of the learning, but they are knowledgeable of all of the learning activities, the content, the vendors, the, the, uh, the resources that actually drives uh, the ability to run learning and be able to manage all of the learning uh, results uh, throughout the entire organization. Uh, governance, like I said, uh, when, when you involve the uh, business as part of the overall uh, decision making for the learning and development organization. So it's not just a delivery organization, it in fact is uh, an organization that's, that's being driven from a priority and decision making standpoint from the business, suddenly it changes the whole dynamic. Uh, and then funding models, learning technology strategies, learning architectures, uh, all are those table stakes. You have to have that and make a decision uh, based on what you're trying to accomplish as the business, understanding the learner segmentation, understanding all of the, the constraints that you have as a business from a technology standpoint, from a workforce standpoint, that ultimately drives what you, what you select as, as the tools uh, for your, your uh, learning organization to develop and deliver those solutions. Oop, there we go. Uh, then some of these other elements. I said that, that measurement is a key aspect. Uh, Organizations now are, are, are investing, in some cases, 5 to 10 percent of their budget uh, to ensure that they have uh, metrics, measurement, analytics. You heard some, some, if you've been in some of the other lectures, on big data associated with learning and development. Uh, you've, you've, you've seen a lot of the um, aspects of, of measuring what's being delivered by L&D and be able to use that as a basis for continuous improvement and evolution of the L&D organization to be delivering more and more impactful uh, uh, solutions. Um, all of these others are elements, performance consulting, uh, audience analysis, uh, social learning, all of these are in one part or another uh, driven by the, uh, the overarching solution. Um, then uh, what we're seeing more and more uh, and these are especially in, in, in large global corporations, uh, the integration of learning and development into talent management. So uh, when we're looking at this, uh, competency management, performance management, succession management, leadership development, all of these things start to become uh, part and parcel to the approach that's used and, uh, and combined with learning and development as the kind of overarching approach. Um, additional uh, elements of, of uh, the, the, uh, the HR alignment, uh, the various metrics associated with HR, and then linking all of that to the metrics that are important to the business. So if there's quality metrics or sales metrics or other things, what is the correlation between what you're doing and measuring and what the business is doing and measuring, and then what is the actual uh, correlation and result of that so that you can actually see the dynamic of, uh, of actually delivery and impact uh, at the same time. That all starts to become core for high-performing organizations. 
Uh, one of the key elements of, of I said, uh, the delivery of high impact learning is having a high impact learning culture. Uh, these are the six elements that we see over and over again. And you notice that in, in many cases, this is not a learning and development uh, responsibility. This is a corporate business responsibility. And so as you start to think about a learning culture in your organization, you really need to start thinking about how am I going to engage and then have uh, the leadership and all levels of management actually be participating actively in uh, learning for the organization? Um, demonstrating learning's uh, value is uh, looking at the impact that you're having. And then obviously a number of these others are, are things that uh, are cultural issues associated with how the business is, is operated, and you as an L&D professional can support that uh, as you start to roll out the thinking associated with these. Now for the job aids. Um, uh, we've got two, two job aids in, in front of you. Uh, one side is uh, our high impact learning organization maturity model. This gets refreshed by us uh, about every 18 months, uh, even though the date on yours says 2009. It actually was refreshed last year, 2012. Uh, but this gives you an ability right now to look at uh, a comparison, a benchmarking of yourself against various organizations that we've studied. Uh, and so uh, the maturity model allows you to assess the, your ability to actually have a measurable impact on the business. Level one kind of answer the mail. So sales calls you, said I'm rolling out a new product, I need some sales training, or I think there's a weakness in, in, in Singapore, I, I want some sales training, you go fine, great, I think I can deliver it by May, uh, and effectively check that off, you deliver it in May. Uh, what was the actual impact? Uh, you might know, you might not know, you might ask, you might not ask, uh, you might be able to find that out based on, on the delivery, you might not. All the way through to a level four, that uh, actually has a strategic relationship between the L&D function and the business. And you would never answer the mail. Uh, you would always want to understand why are they asking, what's driving that request, and when you deliver it, uh, how are you going to know whether or not it was impactful to the business? Uh, that's the, that's the, the spectrum, uh, and obviously those high-performing organizations are falling at the top of level three and level four. Uh, you can do a self-assessment, uh, and you'll see in the slide deck I'm going to provide you, it actually tells you how to navigate from level one to two, two to three, three to four. Sometimes that journey takes three years, four years. Uh, but when you get to level four, you, in fact, are having a measurable impact on the business. With that in mind, um, this is the framework for those level fours. So as you're starting to think about, well, what does it mean to be a level four, uh, and what kind of things are being considered by those level four organizations, this is it. What we've done is we've looked in many cases at 80 or 100 organizations that fall into that level four, which is generally about eight or 10% of the whole population of corporations that we looked at, and said, what commonalities do they have? Uh, and so we distill that into uh, a, um, a learning framework, uh, and this is for the organization, and these are all of the elements that typically they would consider or they would certainly be addressing in one way or another. They may not have every single one of these elements, but they certainly have considered it, uh, and in one case or another, they in fact have, have provided uh, that, um, uh, that, that uh, approach in, in managing and operating uh, their, their organization. And you notice there's certain things that, that you, know, you as an L&D organization might go, well, those approaches look really familiar, uh, but do I actually have a focus on organization governance uh, and, and the management? Do I actually have a learning strategy and a, and a business planning approach? Um, you know, what about my audience segmentation? Do I approach things uh, in kind of uniform when it comes to rollout of programs? Or have I actually done segmentation? You'll know that if, in fact, you start to collect demographics on the actual learners. Uh, do you know what business unit they're in? Do you know what territory they're in, uh, in or region? Do you know what their tenure is in the organization? Do you know what their level of responsibility is? What, what, and so you start to think about that segmentation. As you start to think about that segmentation, you're also thinking about uh, how I'm delivering a solution to that segment and what is the best approach, both from technology, content, uh, delivery um, mechanisms, 
All of that is in there. And you can see in all of these different elements, high impact organizations will have all of those addressed. Uh, and so many of our research members will go, okay, now at least I've got a target. Now we can get everybody together and start saying, oh, what do we have? These are the, the, the attributes of a high performing organization. What do I need to do in order to start to address those, those elements? And I, we, had, we had one organization, a, a, a large technology firm, that took the framework, uh, and this is probably six years ago that when, when we had the, the initial release of the framework, uh, and laid it out in 18-month chunks. Took actually a 48-month uh, uh, look at this and said, I'm going to evolve my organization from where it is, which was kind of a level one, two level uh, 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 in terms of maturity, to this. And they actually laid that out and used that as a vehicle to communicate that to their own organization, plus the execs that had to invest in the, the long-term term growth. Uh, Couple minutes, Couple Perfect. Just wrapping up. Um, um, and so the bottom line uh, is, uh, in order for you to start thinking about uh, evolution of the, of the learning organization, uh, it really does take a level of, of reinvention. Uh, and uh, we've seen this in the States. We've seen it in a number of, of global corporations uh, headquartered uh, inside and outside of the United States. Uh, and obviously, you can see some of the benchmarking that we're, we're now reporting on. Uh, that focus on efficiency, effectiveness, and, and business alignment, and how you actually drive all of that is critical in terms of the way that you actually look at uh, the, uh, the, the elements of what has to be considered when you're actually operating a, uh, a learning and development organization. Um, so the key is, when we're looking at these organizations, how do we differentiate the level fours? They actually have not only business impact, but the business itself uh, is, is more productive. So as you can see here, their profits actually grew three times as fast uh, when we looked at the comparison of our 2008 research to our 2011 research. Uh, for those organizations that we studied, uh, we actually saw improvement of of profits in those organizations. And a lot of that has been attributable to the enhancement of the workforce and the way that L&D has contributed to uh, the, the, uh, the, the talent in the organization. Um, so foundations, table stakes, got to be looking at that. Uh, and then the other aspects, learning measurement and evaluation, learning culture, uh, learning content capabilities, separate those that are going to be at a level three from a level four. And then the level fours are not done. They're all looking at continuing to improve and enhance what they're doing so that they can stay ahead of their competition, ahead of their, uh, um, their goals for uh, efficiency and effectiveness. Um, and then finally, uh, the, the high impact learning culture, uh, integrated talent management, as you start to, you know, and you've heard that several times in, in lectures here in the last day and a half, uh, those two things are, are major contributors to uh, ultimately the impact uh, that organizations have and continue to drive themselves uh, more and more at that level four. Uh, so their vision doesn't end when, I, when they make it to level four. At that point, they have all of the different elements in place, and now they can actually drive that uh, to higher and higher degrees of alignment, efficiency, and effectiveness. So uh, thank you very much, and we'll turn it over to, um, to Simon, and then uh, we'll come back for, um, for uh, questions.